Welcome back. There's a look at Doman Building Materials Group shares. Those shares, as you can see, are down today. This comes after the company reported second quarter financial results that included declines in revenue, profit, and adjusted EBITDA. The company, which operates distribution centers and other facilities across North America, including sawmills and managed forest lands, blamed a slowing market for construction materials for part of the weakness. To talk about it all, we're joined now by Amar Doman, Chief Executive and Chair of Doman Building Materials. Omar, thank you a great deal for uh, joining us. The company did uh, cite a slowing in the construction materials market and lower average pricing for its materials. And those materials uh, include, of course, lumber, uh, other uh, uh, building materials, hardware as well. T talk to us about the, uh, the challenging macro environment that your company operated in in the second quarter. Yeah, really, our second quarter results uh, were off, as you mentioned, but certainly uh, we think we fared very well with the price declines that we saw that were severe year over year, 30% down in southern yellow pine, uh, you know, similar in other uh, species. So we weathered a pretty tough storm. Our margins were off just about a point and a bit. So we made less money, um, but, you know, we certainly did fine. But really the environment in the back, kind of half of the quarter, uh, you know, it started to slow down a little bit more. Uh, as we're into July and August, we've seen certain regions pick up a little bit, but certainly the overall consumer has pulled back. A lot of our products are pressure treated, so decking, fencing, and the like. And when you see those types of items pulled back, you're just seeing kind of an overall consumer pullback. I think the interest rates in uh, most areas have started to take effect. Uh, I understand that decking and fencing are, are big, big uh, sources of sales uh, to your company, correct? Rather than, if I understand correctly, the construction of homes themselves? Correct. Uh, you know, we're about 45% uh, new home, about 45, you know, maybe 50% repair and renovation and about 5% industrial. So that's kind of our product mix and, and sales mix, if you will. Uh, but really decking and fencing uh, is, our, is our number one product. So uh, to what degree is new home construction in the United States a, a key driver of your, of your company's fortunes? Yeah, so what we'd like to see there is you know, after you know, even the COVID boom of you know a lot of housing activity, the decks and fences come later. They're usually built on a custom basis, unless you have children or a pet, you're going to put a fence up right away. In a lot of these track uh, home neighborhoods, if you will, but we've seen a lot of that excess activity come post COVID. Um, so we like when the new housing you know business obviously is is humming. That certainly helps us. But we always have a bit of a lag in, in business coming afterwards. There's nothing alarmist going on here. It's just come off a little bit, and we've just seen the consumer retrench. Maybe build a smaller deck, you know, but not completely stop in any way, shape or form. So volumes are just barely off, but it just did slow a bit. What is your outlook uh, for the next year or so? Yeah, we think we're going to be pretty flat. Uh, I think we're just going to see rates start to come off. I think that effect comes into late 25 and 26 if there's meaningful cuts. And I think the housing market will start to torque up. I think the worst is behind us on lumber pricing. And I think the worst is behind us on interest rates. So we just kind of, you know, kind of, uh, I would say, muddle through uh, the next year or so. And uh, our company will be fine. And we'll be rewarding our shareholders uh, as we have with 55 or 56 straight quarters of solid dividends. And we'll just carry on what we're doing. Uh, you say the worst on interest rates is behind us. That uh, sounds like uh, you, uh, you welcome lower interest rates, which are uh, a, f a fact of life here in Canada and, and certainly expected to be uh, a fact of life in the United States before long. Yeah, absolutely, and it, it does look like these uh, these cuts are coming, and, and you know they're coming for uh, you know good reason, but also coming for bad reason. The bad reason. The high rates have slowed everything down and unemployment starting to tick up. We all we all see the numbers uh, together. So certainly that's starting to happen. But what we like to see behind this, we think, is going to be another boom. And housing prices will be interesting to see which direction they go because they haven't really come down since COVID, as we all know. They're kind of stuck up there. We haven't seen kind of this inversion where rates go up and housing prices go up at the same time. So I'm curious to see how that, all that plays out. But more to say that the consumer will have more money in his and her pocket as we go forward with lower rates. Talk to us about the company, uh, it's, 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 it has a much larger footprint than I would have guessed. I'm seeing 29 distribution centers around North America, an additional 34 treating and distribution facilities. I'm seeing sawmills, uh, truss plants, planing mills. You're a pretty big company. We are, and uh, you know, during the, it depends on the uh, the price of the commodities, but certainly, you know, we hit uh, three billion in revenue, so uh, we, you know, we become a much larger, diverse uh, company. 
primarily, you know, in the pressure tree wood category, distribution of wood products, whether it's lumber, plywood, OSB across Canada, we've got the best distribution network in Canada. In the US, primarily specialty products, distribution. Hawaii, we've got everything, truss plants, treating plant, all down the US West Coast, treating plants and distribution and specialty. So we continue to grow vis-a-vis uh, -vis acquisition. You'll see us buy one to two companies per year in our space. We've been on pace doing that for a number of years now. We'll continue and we'll continue to buy when the value is right. But really, we're by, buying geography now, Paul. So we still need to get to the east coast of the United States, and uh, that's where we're headed next. In, in fact, uh, in March of this year, the company uh, completed an acquisition of uh, assets referred to as Southeast uh, Forest Products. And that sounds like uh, that push to the east uh, that you just mentioned. It did. So, Paul, we acquired two large treating facilities, a capacity over 300 million board feet with these two facilities. One's in Richmond, Indiana, the other's in Nauvoo, Alabama, in northern Alabama. That gets us into a whole bunch of different markets, uh, you know, helps, helps us complete the Alabama market, Ohio, which is a very busy market, Indiana, uh, and the like. So we really like that acquisition. And, and next year, we're going to start to see more results as we start to negotiate larger contracts with some of our key customers, you know, being whether it's Lowe's, 84 lumber, BFS, um, and the like. And uh, we're very, very excited about what those uh, two plants are going to bring us.